which weren't just strings, but were larger than that. They actually looked like membranes or surfaces. The extra dimension Witten added allows a string to stretch into something like a membrane, or a brain for short. A brain could be three-dimensional, or even more. And with enough energy, a brain could grow to an enormous size, perhaps even as large as a universe. This was a revolution in string theory. String theory has gotten much more Baroque. I mean, now there are not only strings, there are membranes. People go on calling the string theory, but uh, the string theorists are not sure it really is a theory of strings anymore. The existence of giant membranes and extra dimensions would open up a startling new possibility that our whole universe is living on a membrane inside a much larger, higher dimensional space. It's almost as if we were living inside a loaf of bread. Our universe might be like a slice of bread, just one slice in a much larger loaf that physicists sometimes call the bulk. And if these ideas are right, the bulk may have other slices, other universes that are right next to ours, in effect, parallel universes. Not only would our universe be nothing special, but we could have a lot of neighbors. Some of them could resemble our universe. They might have matter and planets and, who knows, maybe even beings of a sort. Others could certainly be a lot stranger. They might be ruled by completely different laws of physics. Now, all of these other universes would exist within the extra dimensions of M-theory, dimensions that are all around us. Some even say they might be right next to us, less than a millimeter away. But if that's true, why can't I see them or touch them? If you have a brain living in a higher dimensional space and, you, and your particles, your atoms, cannot get off the brain, it's like trying to reach out, but you can't touch anything. It might as well be on the other end of the universe. And it's a very powerful idea because if it's right, it means that our whole picture of the universe is clouded by the fact that we're trapped on just a tiny slice of the higher dimensional universe. In recent years, we humans have figured out a great deal about our universe. But that begs another question, which is very interesting and very controversial. Could there also be other universes? And do we have any evidence for this? Before we talk about other universes, parallel universes, let's remind ourselves of what we mean by our universe first. Our universe is, does not mean everything that exists. It simply means the, the part of space from which light has had time to reach us so far during the 13.8 billion years since our Big Bang. So this is our universe. If space is bigger than that, then there are other universes, other regions of the same size farther away. If you want to know what's happening in the galaxy over here, you have to wait billions of years more for light to reach us. So we cannot see anything outside of our universe. One of the reasons this is so controversial is because many people say, oh, this is just stupid philosophical nonsense, you know. We, if we can never, by definition, see parallel universes, then it must mean it's not science. It's like talking about ghosts or something else that, you know, you can't see. 
But it's actually more interesting than this because parallel universes are not a theory. They're a prediction from certain theories, which we can in turn test in various other ways. So, so to, to explain what I mean by this, let's look at another theory first. Einstein's theory of gravity, general relativity. It predicts a whole bunch of stuff which we can test and observe, like the motion of Mercury around the Sun, the bending of light by stars, uh, the time dilation that you can measure with your GPS and your phone, etc. And because of this, we take general relativity very seriously as a scientific theory, which means we have to take seriously everything it predicts, even things that it predicts that we cannot actually observe, like what happens when you fall into a black hole. Einstein's theory of general relativity predicts exactly what happens inside black holes, but I cannot go observe it and then come and publish the results in a scientific journal here on Earth. It's impossible, right? But if one of my colleagues says, hey, Max, I don't like, I don't like black holes, you know, they can't just opt out of black holes. It's predicted by the theory. If they want to get rid of the black holes, they actually have to invent a different theory of gravity, another mathematical theory that's different from Einstein's, which doesn't have black holes, but which can explain everything else that Einstein did. And that has proven very hard, so hard that after a hundred years or so of trying, many of the smartest people on the planet have failed to do that. The point here is that for a theory to be scientific, you don't have to be able to observe everything it predicts. You just have to be able to observe at least one thing that it predicts. And if, if that convinces you to believe in the theory, you have to also take seriously the other stuff it says. Now, what does this have to do with parallel universes? Well, first of all, we have a different theory, the theory of inflation in cosmology. It's also a scientific theory. It predicts a whole bunch of things we have tested and observed very carefully in the cosmic microwave background radiation and, and three-dimensional galaxy maps. It's right now the most popular theory in my field for what put the bang into our Big Bang. It was pioneered by Alan Guth and Andre Linde and others. It's a beautiful mathematical theory. And it also predicts parallel universes. In particular, it, it predicts that space itself isn't just really big, but that the space is actually bigger than our universe, maybe even infinitely big. So the logic is that if inflation theory is correct, and we take it seriously, we have to take seriously the idea that space is bigger than our universe, that there are parallel universes, other regions of space that are just too far away from us, for us to see. Every day, some seven billion people roam planet Earth, people moving through time, through space. But what if there was more than meets the eye? Additional dimensions or perhaps another universe entirely? We have learned over the last hundred years, if not more, that for some reason mathematics is a powerful guide into realms of reality that we have not yet been able to visit or examine or experiment with. We're talking about the possibility of parallel universes, entire worlds existing independently of ours, and alternate dimensions, areas of time and space that could exist within our current universe. This summer, the Netflix sensation Stranger Things brought these to life. A little boy named Will Byers caught in a parallel universe, the world of the upside down. This is Hollywood, but it is in fact a real theory supported by real science. Mathematics leads us directly to the possibility of more than three dimensions of space. That doesn't mean it's right. But it does mean that that's where the math naturally takes us. And according to Caltech researcher Dr. Rangaram Chari, these possibilities appear to be illuminated by anomalies in scientific data. It starts with the radiation left in the wake of the Big Bang theory, images showing some spots brighter than others. We think that this may be due to a collision with an alternate universe with completely different, different physical properties than our own. In fact, Dr. Chari says these alternate universes may actually be failed universes, dimensions where the ratio of matter and vacuum energy to vital properties may be vastly different than what we see in our universe. 
In the show Stranger Things, Will Byers' friends want to access his parallel universe so they can bring him home, but they can't. They are told that it would take a massive rip in the atmosphere in order to bring their friend back. It's part of a theory that's put forth by Columbia physicist Professor Brian Green. So imagine that I have a, a tightrope wire, right? It's really skinny and really long. And if you're looking at that from far away, it will look like a straight line you won't be able to see that there's actually a circular dimension that wraps around the wire because your eyes just are insensitive to it from too far away. If you had a little ant or a little flea or a little worm going across the surface of the wire though, it's so small that it can not only walk along the wire, the ant or the flea can walk around the wire. It can directly access that curled up part of the surface that you missed from your distant vantage point. Now maybe that's true not just of an object in the universe, but of space itself, right? So the big dimensions that we inhabit, they're the obvious ones, like the horizontal extent of the tightrope. But just like the rope has curled up dimension wrapped around it, maybe space has curled up dimensions wrapped all around us that we are unaware of. The fascination with parallel universes and alternate dimensions stretches a hundred years or more. Newton, Einstein and those who followed worked long and hard to determine what lies beyond the mathematics and if those worlds can be accessed. The reality still a ways off, but these physicists believe there is reason to persist. There is some evidence in the data that our knowledge of physics is incomplete and alternate universes are an elegant solution to that problem. The math does suggest that there could be, underscore could be, other realms that would be similar to ours in which life could exist. Maybe even realms that are identical to ours, but yet separate from the reality that we directly inhabit. Teresa Priolo, Fox 5. One of the most intriguing concepts in this area of study is the Kerr wormhole, which is named after the mathematician Roy Kerr, who first described it using Einstein's equations of gravity. This type of wormhole is essentially a hypothetical tunnel through space-time that could connect two distant points, such as two different universes or even two different times within the same universe. The Kerr wormhole is often visualized as a ring-shaped portal similar to the looking glass in the story of Alice in Wonderland. Walking through the looking glass transported Alice to a world where animals spoke in riddles and logic didn't always apply. In the same way, passing through the Kerr ring could potentially transport a traveler to another universe or another time where the laws of physics might be very different from those we are familiar with. Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. If you ever find yourself in an interstellar-esque situation where you're being pulled into a black hole, just remember, all hope is not lost. You might actually be transported into another universe. If you didn't know, black holes get their name from the fact that nothing escapes them, but Stephen Hawking now thinks that there could be a way out of a black hole through another universe. In a speech for about 1,000 people at Harvard, the 77-year-old renowned physicist discussed the groundbreaking theory saying that black holes do not keep physical information about anything it absorbs. He said, black holes aren't the eternal prisons they were once thought. Things can get out of a black hole, both from the outside and possibly through another universe. So if you ever feel you're in a black hole, don't give up. There's a way out.